Hi, my name is Shamsi Brin. I'm the user experience and design manager at Archive. And I'm really happy to share an update today on Archive's efforts towards more accessible research papers. Accessibility means access, regardless of disability. And accessibility of research papers is actually very poor right now. Most papers are still accessed as PDF files. And when we began to look into this issue, we learned from research done at the Allen Institute that only 2.4% of PDFs are fully accessible. And it's a situation that isn't changing for scientists who face barriers to access. These are also major barriers for young people with disabilities who want to enter STEM fields. And Archive, we found, was part of the problem. So we began by reaching out to scientists who rely on assistive technology to find out how we could help. And they told us, add HTML as a new format on Archive. We learned that this was the step that Archive could take to have the most immediate impact on people's lives. I want to share a clip now from Dr. Jonathan Godfrey, who is a blind senior lecturer in statistics at Massey University, who explains why adding HTML is so important. When Archive wanted to address accessibility issues, they heard from me and other blind academics that we had been starving for too long. We had been denied access to their vast back catalogue for far too long. We asked for HTML. We knew that we would not get every last article converted to HTML from day one. We understood that. But having access to 90% of a vast back catalogue with relative ease is considerably better than having very poor access to 100% of a back catalogue. But of course, adding HTML represents a unique challenge at Archive where 90% of our corpus is submitted as tech, mostly different flavors of LaTeX. So we reviewed existing tech to HTML converters and we selected LaTeX ML, a tool from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Over the past year, we've been integrating this tool into our submission and announcement processes. And today, we're really happy to report that you can go to most new papers published on Archive and you can choose from PDF or experimental HTML. I would like to quickly demo what this new HTML feature looks like on Archive and how you would access it. Here we're looking at an abstract page for a paper that was submitted to Archive recently. And over here on the right hand side, you can see next to the existing link to download the PDF, which people are accustomed to, there's now a new link to HTML, to experimental HTML. And clicking on this will take us to the HTML page for that paper. You can see there's some new features here that PDF of course can't offer, such as a header, where we have links that help explain why HTML is important links to report an issue, which will ask you to use your GitHub account, and the link back to the abstract, as well as dark mode, which many people find is very beneficial and uh, improves accessibility as well. We also have a navigation here, which can jump you to different parts of the paper and more easily navigate. Up here in this, uh, error box, what we're doing here is displaying areas where the conversion may not have gone exactly right. And you won't see this on every paper, but when there's a conversion issue, we want to be really transparent and open about that and just share with people what's going on. 
But if you find that frustrating, you can always close it and get rid of it and just have a view of the paper here. We do really appreciate when people report issues. So another feature that's built in is if there was an issue, for example, with this formula, you can highlight it and you can report an issue specifically for that selection. And you can always, of course, find the report issues links anywhere you are on the page. Of course, this is only the beginning of the journey. It's not the end. And we heard during our research to not let great be the enemy of good and to go ahead and release HTML before it's perfect. I want to again share this clip from Jonathan Godfrey with his advice to us on the correct approach to accessibility work. Archive has delivered. Archive still has more work to do. But the solution that has been put in place allows for ongoing improvements, allows for blind people to help advise what improvements could or should be implemented so that the service is even better moving forwards. I want to thank Jonathan for mentioning ongoing improvements because, of course, making research more accessible is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And it's really important that scientists with disabilities guide and inform this work at all stages. So we will be collaborating closely with these scientists as well as the LaTeX ML team from NIST and others in the ecosystem. And we hope to together be able to continually improve the quality of the HTML and archive. And some near-term improvements that you'll see shortly include that LaTeX ML is releasing their next version soon, and we will integrate that into archive. We'll also be converting more and more of archives back catalog to HTML. Currently, only new papers are available, so it's a really uh, a rather small slice of the overall corpus. We're also continually discovering and fixing bugs. Many of them have been reported by readers who are diving in and starting to use this feature. And we really thank you. We thank everyone for their input. Uh, we're also focusing our 2024 Accessibility Forum in September on how to improve the accessibility of math in research outputs. As supporters of open access, we all know that if it's not accessible, it's not truly open. This is really important work. And we recognize we're only able to do this work because we're building on decades of background work like the LaTeX ML Converter, international accessibility standards, and more. We're really pleased to be able to share this brief update and to say, let's keep moving forward and inspiring one another. Thank you so much. <laughs>